All right, in this video, we are going to talk about Chat Engine's sockets and how they use WebSockets under the hood. So WebSockets are all the rage nowadays. Lots of people sign up for Chat Engine, use Chat Engine just to learn a little bit more about how WebSockets work and how they can build projects using them. And then other people, more practical developers, just want to use the socket components that we build in order to build out a project quickly. So in this video, I'm going to explain two things. First, I'm going to explain how we actually use WebSockets under the hood and what that implementation looks like. And then second, we're going to go over the socket components and how you can use them when building chat engine based apps yourself. So let's get started. To go into the source code, this is actually kind of cool. We're going to go into the NPM components project and actually look at the raw code that we wrote. So let's start ahead and go. So if we go actually into the repo and we drill down into components socket and we go to socket v4, this is the latest iteration of the socket that we've built. It's an ongoing work in progress. Mastering the socket state management and async event management is actually incredibly hard. So socket v4 is probably not going to be the last iteration that we take. But let's explain how this version works so far. The first thing that we do is we construct the WebSocket route if we're in production. So we go through SSWSS to make sure that there's encryption, and then we address the domain that's actually in production. And what we do is we actually pass a session token, which is correlated to each user logging in. The session token is basically given this username, this password, and this project ID, what is my session token? And that's an API, which you can look at in our documentation. We give you that session token back, and then you authenticate to our server over the WebSocket connection using the session token. Very buzzwordy, but in a nutshell, really what it allows you to do is associate a unique user with an ID so that we know who to basically send events to. So any data that's relevant to this user, so you know, if they get added to a chat, a message gets sent to them, they get kicked out of a chat, we're going to be able to send that unique info to this user particularly using this session token. So there's really a life cycle to this um, WebSocket. So let's just go over the entire WebSocket. The first thing is that we construct this URL to basically uniquely identify the user and their connection to the server. The second thing is we have this hit on connect event whenever the socket connection is successful. So let's see how that looks. Basically what we do is we start pulling the server on a frequency just to make sure that the connection is still live. And if the connection dies, we basically run a reconnect route. And then the second thing is while that connection was being established, we are not actually subscribed to the server and getting incoming data. So when the connection establishes, we do get the latest chats and we also run get the latest messages. Just so we tell the server, hey, we were connecting so we weren't actually receiving anything. What did we miss? Were we sent any messages while we were reconnecting? Were we added to any new chats while we were reconnecting? And this is kind of the catch up mechanism to make sure we didn't miss anything. The second and very important part is handling events whenever any incoming data comes to us. So did somebody just send us a message? Did somebody just add us to a chat? Did somebody you know, change a chat's title or add somebody to one? Let's handle these events here. So we have an event handler function, which basically uniquely identifies the event name. So if it's like a new chat or a chat got edited or a chat got deleted or a person got added or whatever the case may be, we basically take the relevant data per that event and give it to the right context. So we say, hey, we got added to a chat. Take this new chat data, put it in the context so that it will appear on that list on the left-hand side. Oh, somebody sent us a new message. Okay, great. Make sure that we open up that chat, get the list of messages, put it at the end, and then make sure that we mark it as read if we haven't read it already after you know some API gets sent. And the list goes on and on. I'm not going to go through every single one, but again, WebSockets are complicated, but our approach is that each user has their own unique token to identify them. It's kind of their secret. We connect over secure encryption mechanism to our server with that session token so that they can subscribe to any relevant data to them. When we connect, 
We play a catch up mechanism to make sure we didn't miss anything. And when these messages get sent, we basically put that new data in the right spot. Now, how is this relevant to building apps quickly with Chat Engine? Well, we'll go back to the docs and basically when you use a socket and any event data comes in, we put it in the right spot so that whenever you are using any other components, the data just automatically populates. Again, very complicated, so let's go through an example. Let's go back to our beloved support example. So we have the support window and we have the home page with the support window open. And then we have this chat socket here. A chat socket just subscribes to one chat particularly. So in this project, this chat ID, this access key, let's subscribe to any interesting events that are relevant to this chat. And then we have a chat feed over here. So what's gonna happen is whenever something happens in this chat, the chat socket will pick it up and update the context. And then basically this chat feed will pick up on that change and render the changes accordingly. So let's look at an example. We create a new chat. So let's say that it's me at 123.com. I submit that change, a new chat is opened. We see that new change right here, right? And then what we do is if we send a message, hey, I'm here to help, we send that message and that chat, chat socket picks up the change and updates the chat feed accordingly. So that's a concrete example of the connection running, catching up on everything. And then per that event, which just came in, we update the state, the chat feed picks it up. Probably gonna take a while to figure out, but maybe rewatch the video a few times and uh, ask me if you have any questions.